Hello, eternal people. Jesus is my rock, and that is how I roll. Welcome to another episode of California Preaching. So I'm on my way to work. It's kind of hush-hush. I'm not really allowed to talk about where I'm going right now, but it's going to be a lot of fun when everyone finds out. Um, <clears throat> I'm in the car with Pablo. Pablo, say hello. Hello. <laughs> I just can't believe it. Last week it was Olivia Newton-John. This week it's Anne Heche. I just cannot believe how tragic. I watched that video back, and I was like, did they speed up the video of her car? And then I realized, no, they did not. She was driving, had to be 90 miles an hour, right, Pablo? That's right. Whew, really tragic and what a talent she was and what a beautiful human being. I know there's like a lot of controversy around the whole thing, but I just, you know, when a soul is lost, a soul is, is lost uh, and it's just very sad. So I wanted to let you guys know that I have a special guest coming today to the set to visit me and um, I'm gonna keep that a secret. Here's a thought for the day. If Jesus did come to earth, then we, my friends, are in crisis. If the Son of God came to this planet to die for us and to resurrect from the dead from us, for us so that we could have eternal life, you're in crisis. That's a big deal. If God actually came to this planet to do that for you, a crisis is when there's like a fork in the road, when you have to make a decision um, and it's gonna be life changing either way. That's literally the definition of crisis pretty much in the dictionary. I looked it up. If it is true that God came to the planet, wouldn't you think to do that for us? Wouldn't you think that um, you'd have some big decisions to make? Yeah, we've got some very, very big decisions to make regarding that particular crisis. Is this the outfit that you've chosen for the week? It's like a it's, uniform. It's a uniform because I grew up in uniforms only. <gasps> and then once I buy it, like I wear it for like a month. Are we on? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> You're such a good friend. You helped me so much today. Oh, good. Yeah, we just had a really nice talk. We did. It's I feel okay. like you're on the road to yeah. some good healing. It's going to be all Jesus all the time. You are married to Jesus. I you am. Know like, bi biblically, I am? Yeah. We're the bride of Christ. And are you the bride too, though? Yes. Men, okay, good, good. men and women, we're, he's the bridegroom and we are. The church is the bride of Christ. <laughs> How come guys don't get more jealous of Jesus? Like, let's say Billy was following, you know, a faith where it was a woman. What I would the, be like, uh... I would guess that unbelieving husbands would be jealous of of their wife loving Jesus more. That's the hierarchy. Jesus comes first, mm -hmm. then your husband, mm -hmm. then your children, mm -hmm. or then your husband and children, and then everything else. When Jesus is first in your life, that might be hard. That's hard on, especially on an unbelieving husband, because he doesn't get it. Right. Francis Chan, he says, I could never be a marriage counselor, because if Christian a Christian couple came to me, all I would say to them is put Jesus first. Like look to Jesus first. Right. That's it. Right. Like if you're both looking to Jesus a hundred percent, everything else is gonna work out. That's right. And it's obviously that's really hard. I mean, my parents were both believers and they fought all the time. Their focus wasn't always on God. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, it's like not easy. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's easy. Mm -hmm. That's why I mean I'm on sabbatical right now. Mm -hmm. You're so proud of you. For the month of August because it's literally like Sabbath almost every single day for him right now. Yeah, it's because this this month I've like I haven't looked at news, I haven't looked at social media. Wow. It's just I've literally watched like five sermons a day, read my Bible. Like it's just been so kind of nourishing. Mm. Can Can you feel physically, mentally, spiritually that you feel different? Yeah, I mean, I f I definitely feel with the fasting from social media and the news, I mm -hmm. feel less like agitated mm -hmm. it's really agitating it really to read is. social media it's just yes. like there's so much at, coming at you all the time and it's nice to just like unplug from that um guys this is my friend anya and we were yesterday she was doing my makeup and i was asking her a ton of questions because that's what i do i'm very nosy and i always <laughs> want to know people's personal life lives and um you have an incredible story so let's start with... Uh, yeah, I don't even know where to go. Sure. Um, when I was nine, my parents who had been married for, I don't know, 23 years. Mm -hmm. um, my mom came out as a lesbian, mm -hmm. um, which is additionally interesting because my dad is a minister at the time. I don't even think I mentioned that to you yesterday. Or, wow. Yeah, he's retired now. But yeah, was he, full, he was a full-on minister. Yeah. His wife came out as a lesbian. Yeah. Uh, fast forward years later, she ends up marrying this wonderful woman, Corinne. Corinne, however, eventually became Reed, living androgynously, and then Reed 
became Brian. <laughs> Reed was non-binary, was not, did not identify um, as gender. Okay. Was, was at the time, I mean, this is like, what, I don't know, 2000? Uh-huh. So there wasn't as many, um... Categories. Categories, thank you, categories for it all. So, okay, so my lesbian mom, um, who's very clearly, like, butch lesbian, Birkenstock spinals, the whole, like, stereotypes, <laughs> you know, is often, see, is with my stepfather, who is absolutely, no question, masculine, but there's uh, something a little that you kind of pick up on. So you kind of start to go, oh, well, he's probably gay. So then you see Brian, this, maybe. Brian. So right. now you see this gay guy holding hands with this lesbian and it kind of, you kind of go, huh, how does that work kind of thing? But it doesn't matter how it works, it's just how it is. They were very involved in the lesbian community. And when Brian left to transition, he wasn't necessarily gonna be involved in the lesbian community anymore because he was a man, okay? But my mom still identified as a lesbian. And, and he did the top only, right? Top only, yeah. The interesting part of it is that my mom kind of got a little backlash because now she was in a heterosexual, at least apparent heterosexual relationship. And she got a little pushback. Well, because my mom, who was a lesbian, was now with a man. So isn't that a heterosexual relationship? So she started to not feel as welcomed in some circles. So my stepfather, who's heterosexual, sings in a gay men's choir and my I don't know, I guess pansexual mother since in a trans choir. Neither one of them are in the choir that identifies with them, but that's the community they feel most comfortable in. So fast forward years later, and my sister, Shelly, who was in a heterosexual marriage, ends up divorcing her husband of about mm, 23 years and becomes a lesbian. Fast forward to three years later, my other sister, who was married for about 23 years and around 40, leaves her husband and becomes a lesbian. So. <laughs> I'm seeing a trend here. <laughs> so I'm seeing a trend. So oh, the gosh. big joke in my family is when I turned 40, it was like we were gonna have a lesbian themed birthday party. So the pandemic put a little squash on that because I turned 40 in 2020. Um, but my husband started to get nervous, like legitimately nervous. Right. So I think closer and would Makes tell sense. me like, no more girls nights for a little bit. Like we really need to like curb, <laughs> curb oh the God. girls nights. But now I've got two little girls and um, we'll see what happens. Kind of part of me feels a little bit like it's a family tradition. Let's just keep this going and I don't have to worry about teen pregnancy. Are you at all worried about how your children are going to process and understand all of this or do they already kind of get it? It's all they know. How old are they now? Six and eight. Incidentally, I have a niece who's also trans who is uh, seven. And uh, uh -huh. whoa, 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 uh -huh. back up. Uh -huh. How does one know when they're seven? They know so they're young sometimes. She, you know, if I hadn't witnessed and experienced in my own eyes, I'd be full of more questions than I understand the questions. Because I witnessed it, it actually was just very natural and normal. It's so, how do you different. feel about like kids transitioning? I mean, for me, I feel like, gosh, at least I know there's a time when they have to start, otherwise, they can't do the hormonal thing, but. Gosh, I mean, to make a decision like that, really, you're making it for the child. You you definitely have to have the parent to agree. So you, in some aspects, the parent is making this decision. But really, they're not making a decision about the identity. They're making the decision if they want to honor this person's identity. Right. And that is really a child is. really that, at that age able to truly understand their identity? You know what I'm saying? I, like, I totally that scares me. That. What, yeah. if they, what if they turn... 15 or 16 and say, wait a second, that was just a phase. Totally. Like, I'm a, definitely a girl or I'm definitely a boy. So I think that's that kind of the difference. Scary. I think that's the difference of where you can really, when you see it, you witness it happening to somebody, there really isn't a question. There wasn't a witnessing her. She really, through and through, was a little girl from three years old that we all kind of knew from three years old. So that's she was born she was. a boy. She was born a boy. So when that happened, my kids knew their cousin as a little boy. And then we had to explain the transition to her being a little girl now. So this this um, niece of yours will not grow breasts? No. She will, well, I mean, not on her own, but she will have hormones, hormone treatment. They will, she'll basically be on um, hormone oh, Wait, blockers. I got confused. It was, she was born a boy. Yep. Okay, so now she will grow breasts. Well, when it. they give her hormonal support. Okay. Crazy, like this is your life, but to me, when you tell me, it's like it's all, it's like a scrambled it's scrambled eggs. Yeah. I mean, it's like whoa, how I've kind of gotten to a place of like I don't try to figure out how or why. My how or why is irrelevant. Do you raise your children with any faith, or do you have a faith? Uh, my husband was raised Jewish, although he doesn't necessarily identify. 
Um, I will, I raise my children with the mindset of being Unitarian, um, but we are not active churchgoers, let's say. But to me, it's about inclusion. Life is about inclusion in anything, whether we're playing a game or we're sharing thoughts and ideas. Do you have any thoughts on death? Like, what do you think happens after we die? We don't know, and I'm not gonna know. So the best I can do is focus on here and now. My God is the concept of truth, being true to my identity, true to myself, true to my convictions. Um, if I'm feeling like I'm living in truth, that's God be to me. What happens if you're not? What do you do when um, you're I have not? to answer to myself. Do you believe you were? To... Yes. Do you believe that you were made by a creator? I don't think so. So those are my challenges. If I believe this, and, so, and I say this is the truth, then I'm also saying that's not true. And why is my true more than your true? So that's where I go to. Here's the space another of, really intense question. Yeah. But do you think that we're all supposed to agree with each other all no. the time? No, absolutely. I mean, not. obviously, yeah. if everyone agreed, everyone agreed with Hitler, and it was not sure. Yeah, <laughs> no, not I mean, a good thing. <laughs> starting to explore the Baha'i faith a little. There are all. We are all in search of the same thing. There's all. All of these religions are the same in that there's a truth, there's a power that gives us guidance. The idea being that this prophet came to this space at this time for these people to send this message because that's what it needed to be. It doesn't negate Christianity and it doesn't negate Judaism and it doesn't negate, you know, Taoism or Shintoism because that was the space that that message needed to be received. It Tell does me. negate Christianity okay. if we feel there's a one God and that's Jesus. So then sure. that would not be in alignment with your religion and, or well, your faith. I'm saying, I'm saying Baha'i. But you see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. so you can say it's all inclusive, but then... It wouldn't be because that in and itself yeah. is an exclusive belief. Sure, sure. That's your exclusive belief. So you're also having an exclusive sure, belief. So sure. Christians are having an exclusive belief, and then your oh. all-inclusive thing is also oh. an exclusive belief. I, I will sign off on that. Yeah. Sure. So glad that we connected. <laughs> Maybe we'll pray later. Why don't you come back and we'll pray? That was intense. Yeah. It was. It's so sweet that she was willing to talk to us, yeah. you know what I mean, and to tell us her story, but literally yeah. my brain feels like it's scrambled right now. Yeah, and it's, to me, what's interesting is it's when you, when you don't know the plumb line of the Word of God, when you don't know Jesus. When you uh, say the plumb line, does that mean like the basic, like... It's what architects used to use to, to make a building straight. Mm. So they would put a, a, like a lead weight on a string. Mm. And that's the plumb line. So the oh. Bible is our plumb line. Okay. That's how we know we're, um, you know, and aligned with God's word. What what struck me about that story is when you don't know Jesus, and that's how I was. I mean, before I came to Christ, it's just everything was like you don't know you don't know what's what. You don't mm -hmm. know what's good, what's bad, what's right, what's wrong, mm -hmm. what's left, what's right. Like, so instead, you just accept everything. <laughs> you don't know what reality is. You mm -hmm. don't know what the meaning of life is. You don't, mm -hmm. and even. Even just not knowing where you're going to go when you die or what's, what happens after you die mm -hmm. is such a heavy burden to bear. Yeah. And I questioned that for a long time because, I don't know, death just freaked me out for the longest time. But remember when I met you, I was always obsessing on death. Yeah. I don't do that anymore. Good. Are you proud of me? That's good. Yeah, because I, I've grown and I've matured in my faith and I, I feel confident about where I'm going. Yeah, I now. taught you that death is good because we get to get see <laughs> we get to be with the Lord. But we were just praying that she would come to know Jesus and... Anya is a beautiful, s sweet woman, mm -hmm. um, and we thank you for being on the show. If you're watching this, Anya, we're not judging. Yeah, we're, just we're not. We just at all. want you to know Jesus because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. And he's the only way to God. The only way to the Father is through Christ and through Jesus, and and that's it. Like there's that is it is an exclusive claim. Mm -hmm. It's a very exclusive claim, and so I think people get confused about religion and they just assume that if you're a Christian, you're super religious. And, mm -hmm. but I always say to people, I say, I'm not religious, I'm just faith-filled. Is that a good thing to say? Or like or? I'm in a relationship, yeah. In a relationship with Jesus, with Jesus, yeah. Because of God's grace on us, we get to know the truth. Mm -hmm. We get to know Jesus. We get to have a relationship with him. And that is incredible and amazing. That's why we're gonna have all of eternity to thank him mm -hmm. and worship him at his mm -hmm. throne. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about that. What's our next steps? Our next steps is for all of us to pray for her, mm -hmm. for her salvation. Mm -hmm. Because God can obviously see, he could save any, if he could save us, mm -hmm. he could save anybody. He can save anybody. So we just need to pray for Anya. Mm -hmm.
Which we did when she left. But Yeah, and, and she's my girl until this is all over. So I've got some conversations to have. Yeah. I mean, and you were saying, just even in the prayer, that you were saying that, you know, that it's not an accident that she's your makeup artist. Yeah. And that she's she's literally sitting in a room with two Christians, mm -hmm. one who got saved out of, a, you know, a crazy life. Both of us got saved yeah. out of a crazy life. So that was not that's a coincidence. That's not a, an accident. No, that that's not a clanky dank. No. <laughs> so I think God may have some plans for Anya. Mm -hmm. I do too. Yeah. I do too. We pray, Lord, we do. And we hope all yeah. of you will, will pray too. Please. Hi, my sweet Bible babes. This is the China and Vaughn CD. This CD is Holy Spirit activated. It was completely downloaded from heaven. I will sign it for you and you can get it at CaliforniaPreaching.com. Don't miss out. All right, let's go. Hey friends, if this video blessed you in any way, I pray that you will subscribe and that you will press that little bell because that little bell will give you an alert every single time there's a brand new Cal Preach. And remember, sharing is caring. You never know who's gonna find the peace of Christ.